Greetings, this is Paul the Poke from paulthepoke.com. Today's topic, we got a red heifer update. Uh, it's been about six months or so, but uh, here we are, two candidates, Hebrew calendar, Adar 5781, and we are March 2021 in our Gregorian calendar. So the following is from the Temple Institute YouTube channel. And here's the uh, the verbiage from the from the post and the video raising a perfect red heifer fit and kosher to be used for the Torah required ashes of the red heifer necessary for achieving the highest level of ritual purity is a challenge. Even a few non red hairs disqualifies a red heifer candidate. But the Temple Institute is determined to produce the first red heifer ashes in over two thousand years. This update of the status of our current red heifer candidates, note that, that's plural, was timed to coincide with Shabbat Parashat Para, the next to last Shabbat of the month of Adar, on which we read Numbers 19, which details the laws of the red heifer. So they are doing this in conjunction and in, in regards to timing of... Uh, I guess you'd say it's traditional reading of Numbers 19, which focuses on the red heifer. So it does seem to be a little method to the madness of the Temple Institute and their reading. So currently, there are two red heifer candidates that are approaching age. Uh, here they are. There's the picture. You can click on this video and you can listen to what the, uh, the rabbi has to say. And upon inspection, the heifers are 99.9% .9 red with a few non-red hairs. Now, inspectors are patiently waiting to see if the hairs will change color to allow for 100% pure red heifer or heifers, plural. So click on this link. It's about a three-minute video. You'll get the lowdown on these two red heifer candidates. Also, and I know some of you folks have followed this along for quite a while, we're going to review Numbers 19 verses 1 and 2. And this is from the perspective of the Temple Institute. They will be the ones who will be inspecting said red heifers and making the determination if said red heifers are, quote, 100% pure to allow for temple purification um, on behalf of the people of Israel and to which we can have a third temple constructed. So Numbers 19, verses 1 and 2, Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, This is the statute of the law, which the Lord has commanded, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel, that they bring you an unblemished red heifer, in which is no defect, and on which a yoke has never been placed. So the ashes for the sacrifice of the red heifer are necessary for purification prior to the building of the temple. So there currently is no temple. And as a condition for the construction of the third temple, we need a red heifer. And it's been 2,000 years since we've had the last red heifer. Tradition also says that there have been nine and the 10th will be the last. So apparently there will be one more red heifer. According to tradition, that is not a prophecy that is in the Bible. That's an oral tradition. Uh, but nonetheless, they're counting. They're paying attention. And here's the criteria used for the identification of the red heifer. Again, interpretation of the verses provided by the Temple Institute in Jerusalem. So in the phrase, and take a red heifer, uh, since the verse instructs us to take a heifer, we do not purchase a calf and wait for it to grow older while in our custody. And take a heifer means that the act of acquisition has to take place while the animal is a heifer. However, if a red calf is available, a price can be set with its owner and the transaction can be concluded, but we do not take possession until it reaches the proper age as mandated by the Bible. Now, I know some people have um, have stated, I've not, I mean, it's a statement. I've not seen any position paper or statement by the Temple Institute, but that the temp or but that the, the heifer has to be um, born in Israel. Because I know they have looked at some things, at some some heifers outside of Israel. I know they looked at one in Mexico within the last few years. So 
I've not seen anything on that. I know some people have brought that up as a point of contention or attention. So it'll be the Temple Institute that's making that determination. An unblemished red heifer in which is no defect. This means that the presence of a few as two hairs of any other color other than red will render it invalid. Even its hooves must be red. It must also be totally free from any physical blemish or defect, whether internal or external. A list of blemishes that would disqualify the animal for the sacrifice are noted in Leviticus 22. I'm not going to take the time to go to Leviticus 22, but if you are interested, I would encourage you to read Leviticus 22 because I promise you these, these folks at the Temple Institute have, and I'm sure they got a checklist and some interpretation as to what would qualify or disqualify said red heifer. Uh, on which a yoke has never been placed, the red heifer must have never been used to perform any physical labor. This would include riding or even leaning on her. But if a yoke were placed upon her even once, even if she were not used to plow, this would be enough to render the heifer unfit for use. So no labor for this heifer, even as subtle as leaning against the, you know, the heifer. That would disqualify the heifer. Uh, oral tradition says three to four years of age um, is the age at which a heifer would be sacrificed. And again, that's been passed down through the generations orally. Um, and those are the criteria that the Temple Institute is going to use. Now, if you are interested in red heifer information, highly recommend you go to the templeinstitute.org under the red heifer section. They have an entire section dedicated to the red heifer. Um, and you can see um, what they have to say at the Temple Institute regarding a red heifer. And there's a lot there. I bet you there's 12 to 15 links you can click on about information for the red heifer if you're interested. Also, uh, if you are interested of recent red heifer history, you click on uh, this link, paulthepope.com, red heifer. And this goes back, oh my gosh, four or five years now. And they've been trying to genetically create, modify, uh, grow a perfect red heifer. They're trying to make it happen. They're ready. They're ready to go. So interesting times, interesting stuff. You know, now again, for those of us who follow, believe in Jesus, identify ourselves as Christians, the, the red heifer symbolically is the blood of Christ, the perfect shed blood of Christ that was shed on our behalf for sin. Uh, red heifer points to the blood of Christ. Cliff notes on that. also have an article or two on that. And sometimes, I know a lot of you guys have been following along for some time, and I kind of drop and drag, cut and paste. Uh, these things come up. Gosh, red heifer reports every 6 to 12 months, unless something shows up or there's a rash of them. But by and large, I mean, this isn't something uh, that's grabbing the headlines often. I do know it's one of the most... Uh, people are interested in the red heifer. So anytime it comes up, people ask, people are always wanting red heifer information. So found some, got it. Just reporting what I've seen. If you are interested in sharing this with others, please feel free to share with others. Paulthepoke.com. Also for people who are interested in um, signing up for the blog, Click your, uh, type your name here in the gray box, email address, hit subscribe, and we'll forward you an email every time we put up something new. And this is categorized under prophecy, trend update, keywords, numbers 19, Red Heifer Temple Institute. So appreciate you guys following along. And, you know, maybe those hairs, those non-red hairs will turn red. And we will be ready to move forward, sacrifice the red heifer, save the ashes, 
and then just waiting for political clearance to build the third temple. So they're working at it. They're on a ranch out there in an undisclosed location in Israel, trying to genetically modify and grow a red heifer. So sign of the times, interesting stuff to watch. Appreciate you guys following along. Take care. Have yourself a good one. Bye.